Now at 5.30, crossing the line between worship and campaigning. With the primary just weeks away, candidates are trying to get every vote they can. Good evening, I'm Liz Ortiz. And I'm Russ Bowen. But where and how a voter is swayed can be problematic. Tonight, we're digging deeper into claims made against one U.S. Senate candidate in particular. Former North Carolina congressman and now candidate for U.S. Senate Mark Walker has not tried to hide the fact he's appeared in church services across the state. It's well documented in his Twitter feed. By his own admission, he's been endorsed by pastors in the pulpit. There have been times where pastors take liberties to say, we like Mark Walker, he stands for values, I'm supporting Mark Walker, et cetera, et cetera. And there are some times where uh, the pastors or other people will mention that. And I'm not trying to be coy to say that that doesn't happen from time to time, uh, but it's certainly not something that we solicit or we seek out. The Baptist publication, Word and Way, recently claimed these appearances violate rules clearly stated by the IRS that nonprofits cannot participate in a candidate's political campaign. Publisher Brian Kaler. Even if there wasn't a rule, I think it's really problematic for a church to turn its Sunday morning worship or its Sunday evening worship, a time that's supposed to be about bringing people together to worship God, and instead changing that focus, that focus away from God into something else. Baptist pastor and professor of philosophy and religion Jeffrey Vickery agrees, but goes even further. Essentially what happens then is that church is taking advantage of North Carolina taxpayers in order to then support their particular um, overt uh, use of their property and their facilities to promote a candidate. However, the IRS rarely investigates or removes the 501c3 status of a place of worship. In response to a tweet questioning Walker's appearance in church, Brian Kaler says he received this direct message from Walker claiming slander. Did you perceive it as a threat or threatening? There's this implication that the campaign is collecting receipts of something to try to, you know, attack me or our organization for our reporting. And so I very much took it as a as a threat that more was to come if we didn't, you know, lay off of this topic. They deemed that as a threat. Did you mean it as a threat? In fact, it's just the opposite. I went to that person first as opposed to trying to do anything, but I did tell him, which I thought he was doing very forthright that what you're doing is slanderous. It is a lie because it was not doing a campaign event. We sang in the choir. At Walker the doesn't stand alone. Democrats down. also came we under fire after a get out the vote video the featuring line. Vice President Kamala Harris was sent to black churches in Virginia. Walker does agree there is a line, but how is that defined? Now, if a church begins to raise money or spend church dollars on a said candidate, then yes, I, I, I think then we're in a different territory there. I'm disappointed in candidates that are so focused on winning that they're willing to transform a holy moment into a partisan campaign rally. And I do want to make a point, too, that Mark Walker isn't the only one in the country who does this or who has appeared in churches. Right. It's just the question mark of where question mark of where we are with all this. I did reach out to the churches where Mark Walker appeared. I haven't received a response for a request of that at this point. Of course, I'll keep that posted once we do. All right.